हेलो एवरीवन आई एम शिवानी एंड वेलकम टू सिविल सीरीज एज यू ऑल रिक्वेस्टेड अबाउट द टेस्ट ऑफ स्टील स्ट्रक्चर आई अपलोडेड द टेस्ट ऑफ स्टील स्ट्रक्चर यस्टरडे इफ यू हैवेंट अटेम द टेस्ट देन द लिंक ऑफ टेस्ट इज गिवन इन द टेलीग्राम चैनल ऑफ सिविल सीरीज एंड द लिंक ऑफ टेलीग्राम चैनल इज गिवन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन एंड इन द कमेंट सेक्शन इफ दैट लिंक डजेंट वर्क देन कॉपी दैट लिंक and use any kind of browser to search that link or to open the telegram channel or else you can directly go to the community section to access the link of the telegram channel okay so this video is about the detailed explanation of 20 questions which are mentioned in the test of steel structure so let's start with the questions first question the permissible bending stress in slab base of steel column for all grades of steel is limited to so this is the constant value which is for the permissible bending stress permissible bending stress in in slab base okay in slab base and that value is limited to that value is limited to 185 Newton per mm square. So this is square. So for this question, the first option is correct. There are some remaining terms which is related to the permissible stresses. In that first one is axial stress. For axial stress, the permissible stress value is 0.6 Fy. Fy is yield strength of steel. then second one is bending stress bending stress value for bending stress is 0.66 fy for permissible stress then next is average average shear stress value is 0.4 fy next one is maximum shear stress value is 0.45 fy then last one is bearing stress and the permissible value is 0.75 fy okay so these are the remaining terms related to the permissible stresses and about the slab base the value is 185 newton per mm square then next question then question number 2 the maximum allowable vertical deflection under live load for cantilever member supporting brittle cladding in the industrial building so for vertical deflection here we consider two condition first one is cantilever beam or cantilever member second one is simply supported member okay so there the in the case of cantilever and simply supported the supports are different so that's why the deflection in case of both beam is different so for that here we consider two condition first one is elastic cladding first one is elastic cladding in case of elastic cladding the deflection is span by 120 if the beam is cantilever and if the beam is simply supported then the elastic cladding deflection is span by 240 if brittle cladding is present if brittle cladding is present the vertical deflection in case of cantilever is span by 150 and in case of simply supported the vertical deflection is span by 300 here in case of simply supported beam there is one condition extra than the cantilever beam which is maximum deflection in case of simply supported beam is less than l by 325 l is the span and this is the general condition for the vertical deflection in case of simply supported beam as per the question they ask about the brittle cladding in the cantilever beam so for the brittle cladding in cantilever beam vertical deflection is span by 150 so here last option is correct which is span by 150 the next question third question select incorrect statement from the following so we'll see each option one by one so first one is purlin is subjected to biaxial bending so first option is correct because if in case of any construction the flat is or the roof is flat 
then uniaxial bending happen uniaxial bending happen but in case of truss the roof is inclined or a sloping so that's why here biaxial bending happen in case of sloping roof biaxial bending happen okay the next option is the span of purlin is center to center of truss purlin is located at the panel point of the truss yes this is correct because purlin span is from center to center of truss and purlin is located at the panel point of the truss so this is how the structure of the truss okay i draw the structure here this is how the structure of a truss these two are the principal rafters principal rafters and here at the last there is also a principal rafter on the principal rafter we place the purlin we place the purlin here okay so this is how the purlin and to support the purlin cleats are provided here okay and in the remaining part here common rafters are present common rafters are present so here the second option is correct then third option is purlin runs perpendicular to truss yes for the truss the purlins are perpendicular third option is also correct then last option is purlin is designed as a tension member purlin is not designed as a tension or compression member but the purlin is designed as a bending or flexural member and here the bending or flexure is biaxial so last option is incorrect so for this question the fourth option is correct fourth option is correct here the next question question number 4 if d is a depth of wave t is a thickness of wave of a plate girder such that this is the given condition and for this given condition we know about the stiffness provided which kind of stiffness is provided for this condition so there are different conditions for stiffness in case of plate girder first condition is if d by t w is less than 67 epsilon then this plate girder is considered as ordinary beam considered as ordinary beam second condition is d by t w is less than or equal to 85 epsilon then no need of stiffness here no need of stiffness here the third one is d by t w is greater than 85 epsilon but less than or equal to 200 epsilon fourth condition is if d by t w is greater than 200 epsilon but less than or equal to 250 epsilon fifth condition is if the d by t w is greater than 250 epsilon but less than 400 epsilon these are the conditions so in that this condition for this condition only vertical stiffness are provided only vertical stiffness are provided for the next condition vertical stiffness plus first horizontal stiffness are provided at point 2 d for this condition vertical stiffness plus first horizontal stiffness at point 2 d and plus second horizontal stiffness at point 5 d are provided here then last condition is if this d by t w is greater than 400 epsilon then here in this case increase the thickness of wave increase the thickness of wave okay so for this question the third option is correct here that end bearing stiffness intermediate transverse stiffness longitudinal stiffness at point to d from compressive phase at neutral axis are needed so the third option is correct the next question then fifth question a steel rod of 20 mm diameter is used as a tie member in the roof bracing system and may be subjected to permissible stress due to wind load what is the maximum permissible length permissible permissible length means l effective so to find out the l effective first we know about the 
lambda value then k value lambda is nothing but a slenderness ratio slenderness ratio and k is radius of gyration so first as per the tension member there is one chart for the slenderness ratio in that first condition is due to reversal of loading except wind and seismic load wind and seismic load the value for the slenderness ratio is 180 then second due to wind and earthquake load wind and earthquake load the value of slenderness ratio is 350 and last one is if that member is permanently subjected to tension then the value of lambda is 400 lambda is equals to l effective by k k is the radius of gyration and k is equals to square root of i by a i is the moment of inertia a is the area for moment of inertia here the diameter is given means circular section is given circular cross section is given so for that the moment of inertia is pi by 64 d raised to 4 divided by area is pi by 4 d raised d square after putting the diameter value into this we get the radius of gyration as 5 mm and the lambda value is 350 here because due to the wind load reversal of stresses due to the wind load so here the lambda is 350 so l effective is equals to lambda into radius of gyration which is 350 into 5 and the answer is 1750 which is in the first option so first option is correct here then next so before the next question to solve these kind of questions you know about the table of the slenderness ratio you know about the values of the slenderness ratio then you know about the formula for the slenderness ratio radius of gyration formula then moment of inertia formula so for this particular question you require Five to six formulas and one chart to solve this question. Then next question. Then question number six. For simply supported beam, the maximum permitted deflection is, as per the IS eight hundred two thousand seven. In the second question, we discuss about the permis. We discuss about the vertical deflections in case of cantilever beam and simply supported beam. And in that question, I mentioned that in case of simply supported beam. the maximum deflection should be less than 1 by 325 of span okay but this value is regarding the is 800 1984 and this is the old code and the new version of this code is is 800 2000 and in this code the value of maximum permitted deflection given is 1 by 300 of the span so you can correct the value of this deflection from the second question so for this question the value for the permitted maximum deflection is 1 by 300 of the span second option is correct here the next question question number 7 for maximum value of effective slenderness ratio as per is 800 for a tension member in a reversal of direct stresses occurs due to the loads other than wind and seismic load In the fifth question, we discuss the chart of the tension member. In that, the first value, which is other than the wind and seismic load, the slenderness ratio for this condition is 180. So for the 180 here, last option is correct. The next question. Then question number eight. The shape factor for standard roll beam section. So to know about the standard roll beam section shape factor, first we know about that. the roll section is of i or h shape and for i and h shape the shape factor is 1.12 1.2 so here first option is correct so here we discuss about the remaining shapes so in that first one is rectangle there is one trick to remember this shape factor the trick is first there are six shapes first one is rectangle so remember here r second one is circle c r c then d t and then i t okay these are the shapes first one is rectangle second one is circle third is diamond fourth one is triangular 
फिफ्थ वन इज आई और एच बीम एंड लास्ट वन इज टी द वैल्यू फॉर द रेक्टेंगल इज वन पॉइंट फाइव फॉर सर्कल वन पॉइंट सिक्स नाइन सेवन फॉर डायमंड टू एंड फॉर ट्राइंगल टू पॉइंट थ्री फोर फॉर द फर्स्ट फोर द नंबर्स आर इन ए इंक्रीजिंग ऑर्डर एंड देन टू वैल्यूज आर फॉर आई एंड एच सेक्शन विच इज वन पॉइंट वन जीरो एंड वन पॉइंट टू जीरो and the remaining for the t section the value is 1.90 to 1.95 okay so this is about the shape factor if you know about the extra points related to the shape factor the formula for shape factor is mp by my or you can elaborate this formula as a by 2 into y1 bar plus y2 bar divided by i by y max i by y max is nothing but section modulus okay so this is how you can discuss your things from one question to another question the next question is then question number 9 on increasing the quantity of carbon in steel one of the following decreases okay so let's discuss what happens when when the quantity of carbon is increases so first thing is if carbon content increases then the strength of the steel increases strength increases second if you increase the quantity of carbon in a steel then the carbon because of the carbon the steel goes from pure carbon to impure carbon steel goes from pure carbon to impure carbon or in impure steel for example the wrought iron has a less carbon content so it it consider as a pure steel but the pig iron pig iron is with a high carbon content so it consider as a impure carbon steel then third one is if this quantity of carbon increases then elongation elongation decreases and if this elongation decreases then the ductility property decreases because ductility has a ability to make any steel into the wire so it has a more tensile in nature so this ductility also reduces here and ductility is also known as tensility so tensility is given in the last option so here last option is correct the next question so this question is similar here that if carbon content of steel is increased which parameter of steel is reduced their tensility is given and here in this question the ductility is given so second option is correct here 